Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a matter of great joy for me to be with you all once again and share from God's word. We are studying about the word truth. The truth which is explained in the pages of the scripture. We are doing a selective Bible study where we are picking up few verses from the Bible and we see this word truth and truth is eternal truth. Bible talks about truth, the whole truth. And we already learned many companion passages or companion words which is attached to truth. And we are all blessed by those words because we need those words. We need those to be a part of our experience. We already learned that Jesus Christ is the one who is the truth. He has spoken the truth and he spoke for God and no one else could speak with authority and clarity the whole truth about heaven and hell and this present world. John's Gospel chapter 1 verse 14 John's Gospel chapter 1 verse 14 we read like this and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Now listen to me full of grace and truth full of grace and truth again one more companion word is coming here we read from john's gospel chapter 1 verse 14 we know that the word of god means we can divide it into two the inscripturated word of god that is the bible the scripture of truth the word of god it is the inscripturated god inspired human authors who were moved by the holy spirit so that they wrote the mind of god the thought of god the heart of god for god's glory and for our benefits that is the inscripturated word of God. Then we have the incarnate word of God that is in the person of Christ. He took upon himself a human form and he came into this world with a flesh and with blood. And we could see the glory of God in the person of Christ. All what God could do with ease. Christ could, good, could do with ease. If you go through the pages of the scripture, you will marvel all, all the things what God could do, Christ could go, do effortlessly. God calmed the sea, God can cause the storm in the sea. God can calm the storm, God can cause the storm. The same way Christ can calm the storm and he can cause the storm. He can heal anybody at his wish. God can command the spirit world and they obey. Christ command the spirit world and they obey. And God can forgive sin and Christ cancel sin immediately and with absolute uh, absoluteness. Your sins are completely forgiven. He can just pronounce forgiveness of sin in your life because he is able to forgive you. He, because he is a son of man who took upon himself the punishment of your sin without having a dent on his justice 
and without having a den on his love, only Christ can forgive you. You think about any philosophy where God forgive, just like that, you can say that love, love over justice is not love at all. Think about it. If you find a culprit or a criminal who is convicted and he is brought to the uh, court, a convicted criminal, a culprit is brought to the court and here sits a judge and judge because he is so loving without seeing any case, without hearing the arguments of the opposing advocate, if he just pronounce him not guilty and just uh, allow him to walk out of the court, he is not loving the people who, whom he serve. He is not loving the law of the land. He becomes, uh, his love becomes an unjust love. He sitting on the seat of a judge, he will be doing injustice to the law and to the land. So that is not what happened with God when he wanted to love sinners and forgive sinners. You, you know what God did? Without having any dent to his justice, he punished his own son Lord Jesus Christ for the sins of the world. He took the responsibility of your sin and my sin. He took the punishment of your sin and my sin. And the, the wrath of God was satisfied. Person of Christ took the punishment. He was crushed for our iniquity. He was condemned for our sin. He became a curse for us. He death our death. And he spared us without having any dent to the uh, to the justice of God, God spared the, the sinner who trust the Lord Jesus Christ and the sacrificial death on the cross of Calvary which he undertook on behalf of you and me. So, we come to John's Gospel chapter 1 verse 14 and we see the companion word truth, the full of grace and full of truth, full of grace. Grace means what? Grace means God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace is the unmerited favor which God bestows upon unworthy sinners. The unmerited favor which God uh, uh, bestows upon unworthy sinners. And that grace also becomes yours when you come to understand the truth of God's word. It is compelling. The truth of God's word is compelling. Truth of wo God's word is cajoling. Truth of God's word, it is attractive. It is not some drudgery. It is not that you read something without, without any enjoyment. It brings pleasure to your soul. It brings joy to your soul. It brings peace to your soul. And the grace of God to its fullness. Full of grace, not half of grace. Not some, no, uh, some sprinkles of grace, but full of grace will be yours and mine if we are able to come to the truth of the scripture, truth about our salvation, truth about our savior. And you experience personally, not as a theory, but experience personally the gracious nature of our God. May the Lord grant that to your, to your life and my life. John's Gospel chapter 1 verse 17. For the law was given through Moses. But the grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The same companion word, grace and truth. It is merged in the person and work of Christ. John 3.21 John 3.21 But he who does the truth comes, for, to, comes to light. Whether you want to oh, look into your own heart and understand and acknowledge and affirm that you belong to the truth or not. Whether you like to live in the light of God's word. Whether you want God to convict you about the darkness in your soul. When you come to God's word, it will show you what you are lacking. It will show you what you need to change. It will show you your dirty attitude. It will show you the backsliding nature of your heart. It will show you your weakness. It will show you your inabilities. Hey, would you like to see those things plain before your eyes so that you will have an opportunity to depend upon God and come out of those things? I urge you to come to God's word. It will be a blessed life to live 
uh, in the illuminated light illuminated light of god's word and you will love it and may the lord give you the prompting through the spirit of god to to come to the light of god's word come to the truth of god's word john's gospel chapter 4 verse 23 john's gospel chapter 4 verse 23 you may be thinking why i am not attending some practical issues and uh, harping on those issues i will tell you i am speaking the word of god and it is the prerogative of the spirit of god to take it and apply it into your personal struggles and into your personal problems and into your personal agony and he will do it and it is with that confidence in the word of god that i sit and just explain the scripture to you and it is the word of god it is the spirit of god which will apply it into your heart if you need encouragement he will encourage you with these verses if you need to come out of your fear god will give that to you if he need to convict you about some of the issues in your heart the word of god can do that and it is with that absolute conviction and confidence in the word of god the ability of the word of god that i preach the word and teach the word by just explaining some of the verses sticking on to some word now we are concentrating on the true the word truth and i will tell you uh, children would like to have junk food children would like to have burgers and puffs and all bakery items and uh, your uh, ham and things like that but nourishment the true nourishment does not come from the junk food for your spiritual life for your spiritual growth for your spiritual maturity you just leave all your problems and no don't try to fix your problems but you pursue god you pursue god's word you pursue god's kingdom seek ye first the kingdom of god and all these things shall be added to your life that is the basic foundational principle from which we study the scripture it is not that i have this problem how to get out of this problem this is an anxiety how to get out of this anxiety you throw all those things it is all temporal things it is only for a season but your eternity is at stake your eternal soul can go to hell if you have not repented and turned to god Yeah, through the lord jesus christ jesus christ told i am the way truth and life and no one comes to the father but through me he is an exclusive savior he is a savior of the world his message is for everybody everywhere in the world preach the gospel to the end of the uh, earth end of the world to the rich and to the poor to the wise and the unwise why the message is so important because everybody need it why everybody need it for all have fallen short of the glory of god you cannot make a cross for that verse and say accept me i am not that sinful like the other person god is not asking for a comparative sinfulness he is talking about the absolute sinfulness and the total depravity of your life and my life as human beings we are fallen short of the glory of god and that is all what god's word says i have uh, say, uh, i have illustrated that with a, uh, uh, some example one example i will tell it once again if you have a glass window to to shatter that glass window into a uh, few pieces if you want to break that uh, glass window you need not throw 100 stones at a time 10 stones at a time five stones at a time a single stone is more than enough to shatter that window the holy demand of god's law to break that you need not do 100 sins you need not do 10 sins you need one sin to shatter that you need to do have one sin in your life for god to send you to hell that is god's holiness my dear friend if you think that you are good enough if you think that your charity or your good deeds or your righteousness is good enough to uh, get you into heaven you are totally totally you are uh, 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 misunderstanding the holiness of god bible says that he is a thrice holy god no sinner can stand before him only the righteousness of god applied to your life will be able to make you fit to sit or stand in the presence of god 
are you behind christ are you in christ are you trusting in christ are you a surrendered person to christ it is very very important to know what is your relationship with christ and with the gospel of christ if you have never thought about it i urge you to pick up a bible and read through the pages of the scripture to understand who this christ is he is unique he is matchless he is glorious he is loving he is gracious his birth it is unique if you read his birth you will be wondering what kind of a birth is this he had a pre incarnate existence before coming into this world he was there in all of eternity from the past eternity he is god and that god took the form of a man in incarnation that is the message of christmas why he took the form of a human being he came to reveal god he came to seek and save the sinners he came to bind the broken hearted he came to give us a healing in our soul he want to spare us to cover us from our sin so that the punishment which is due unto us eh, which was supposed to come upon us he took up it, took it upon himself will you love this christ will you give some regard to this christ and this holy christ is your only hope and he says he says in john's gospel chapter 4 verse 23 but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth in spirit and truth i will tell you your spiritual life should be based on the truth of god's word don't blindly go after something have some foundational truths very clear in your heart because the spirit of god and the truth of god the spirit of god and the truth of god's word it works together and a true worshipper means there are false worship you can worship the creation rather than the creator god the creator god will not accept that if we worship the work of our own hand if we worship our work or if we worship some uh, inanimate things i'll tell you the creator god will not be happy for that the creator god will not be pleased with that but uh, the father is seeking true worshipers who will worship the father in truth and spirit for the father is seeking such a worship the father is seeking such to worship him will you be such a person who will understand the truth about god and worship him in truth and with the help and aid of the spirit of god dwelling in your heart so there is so many things at stake with the worship there are so many things at stake with the truth truth will help you to have to become a true worshipper the true god the creator god the redeeming god the saving god the god who is almighty all powerful omnipresent present everywhere you can you can talk to that god from anywhere in this world you need not go to a particular geographical location for this god to meet with you and this puny little person to meet with god because he is an all wise god who have explained about himself and revealed himself in the pages of the scripture so i urge you to come to the true god through the true word of god so that you will become true worshipers john's gospel chapter 5 verse 33 john's gospel chapter 5 verse 33 you have sent to john and he has borne witness to the truth witness to the truth if you have listened to the past few messages it is all about truth that i am witnessing it is all about the word of god that i am witnessing it is all about the salvation and the truth about salvation that i am witnessing i don't have any other thing to say other than the truth which god has given into our hands witness means he has seen something he has heard something he has experienced something and he is just proclaiming it i am nothing but a witness to the truth of god's faithfulness and god's truth in his word john's gospel chapter 8 verse 32 john's gospel chapter 8 verse 32 if you have bible please read it in your own bible john's gospel chapter 8 verse 32 and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free 
and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free freedom is not the right and ability to do what you want to do or what you would like to do i have told this many times and i will tell you if you are looking for true liberty and true freedom you need to know the truth truth of god's word will liberate you will make you free from all the superstition all the superstitious thoughts and thinking what you have developed over time what you have understood from others the truth of god's word is liberating and what is liberty and what is freedom the true liberty and true freedom is the right and ability to do what you ought to do what is that you ought to do as a creature you need to honor god you need to please god you need to serve god you need to be a shadow of god you need to exhibit you need to be a channel of god's blessing to others you need to be a channel of god's love to others you need to be a channel of god's help to others and i will tell you that for that you need freedom you need freedom from sin you need freedom from selfishness you need freedom from self centeredness and the bible and the truth of god's word can make you a, a truly liberated person free to be god's servant free to worship the true god in true worship and believe the truth of god's word i urge you to come to the truth so that you will experience freedom freedom from wrong habits freedom from addiction freedom from sin freedom from lust freedom from covetousness freedom from materialism freedom from consumerism freedom from everything what is troubling you right now is found in the truth of god truth of god's word and truth of the person of christ john's gospel chapter 14 verse 6 do you have liberty do you have freedom have you experienced freedom in your life it is not the ability or right to do what you want to do but freedom and ability to do what you ought to do and that itself you need to understand you need to come to god's word then and then alone you will understand what is the purpose for which you are created into this world bible says that god is the one who knit you together in your mother's womb you are not an accident you are born into this world because god created you in your mother's womb all what you feel that you are missing in this life all the love all the peace all the joy all the meaning what you are feeling that you are missing in this life can be provided by god your creator your redeemer your savior your provider your sustainer he is all in all all glory to him and if you understand him you will be liberated and you will know the true meaning of liberty and freedom and you will start enjoying it in the days to come till you are taken by death into eternity or through rapture into eternity you will be able to live this life with uh, 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 absolute clarity where you are heading to what is your responsibility what your focus in life is what your ultimate goal is i will tell you have you ever thought about the ultimate goal of your life what is that you want to become what is that you want of out of life what is that you want out of your family if you are you are not a person who have not thought about your ultimate goal you are living a miserable life many years back before i came to christ before i understood the person of christ in an intimate and personal way before i accepted the lord jesus christ as my savior and lord i i thought uh, so many thoughts as goal in my life maybe some particular brand of dress maybe some particular brand of vehicle maybe some particular uh, uh, place where i geographically to place myself or uh, so many things i i uh, aimed after that was the 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 mirror uh, there were so many things what i was uh, uh, seeking after longing after but i'll tell you once you receive that when you get once you get that you understand that it is not satisfying solomon the wisest king ever lived other than jesus christ he told it's all vanity 
it's all futility it is all nothingness after he had many palaces and many gardens and all kind of fruit trees and all the orchestras all the servants and all the concubines and all the pleasures which he wanted he acquired and procured everything in his treasury was filled with gold and silver and he had everything but the futility and nothingness and meaninglessness what he felt in his heart it was thorough it was terrible and he acknowledged that and then he understood that he was pursuing the wrong goal in his life what is that you are pursuing in your life if you are pursuing money you will never be satisfied with enough if you are pursuing prestige you will not be satisfied if you are pursuing power you will not be satisfied we know about many political leaders who amassed wealth and amassed so many estates and they want to keep themselves in power but they could not but because death took a toll on them death will take us uh, uh, as a surprise either death whether it is going to be a slow landing or a sudden uh, uh, landing for us that is inevitable we need to put our goal and aim beyond death and to that and bible will help you and i pray from the bottom of my heart that the truth of god's word will help you and lead you and guide you to the true liberty of living for the right reason living for the reason for which god has created you god created you for his own glory god created you for himself so that you will glorify him and enjoy god forever and that is what i do when i read the bible when i meditate the scripture when i speak on behalf of him when i show his love to others when i take care of a family as a shadow of god's uh, magnanimity to my dear ones i will tell you i am fulfilling what god created me for and i enjoy that and i am preparing myself for the day of death where i will be able to come out of this body of death i will be able to step out of uh, this world into the eternity which god has prepared beforehand for us may the lord give us insight into these truths and these thoughts may his name be glorified let us look to the lord in prayer loving heavenly father we thank you for this precious truths which we can give liberty in our life guidance in our life which can give us a total different perspective to this uh, fleeting life this life which is so short and every man we need to face death at one point of time prepare us for eternity through your word and through your truth so that we will find gracious god extremely gracious and extremely good and magnificent unanimously glorious and we need to be uh, to be satisfied in you and you are a sufficient to satisfy all the deepest need of our heart to that and we give all glory to you and magnify your matchless name in jesus christ precious name we pray amen